Hi everyone, in this video we'll be taking a look at a recently launched AWS feature called CloudTrail Lake. CloudTrail Lake was launched sometime in 2022 and uh, this feature uh, is the answer from AWS to relieve some of the pressure points or some of the pain areas that security investigators and security auditors had when they were analyzing CloudTrail events. So this service not only provides the ability to aggregate logs, but also provides a cool SQL curable, curable interface and some dashboards for uh, investigators to take a look at. Now you might ask, what were uh, the investigators using before CloudTrail Lake feature was launched? So they were using Trails. Trails uh, is a CloudTrail resource and uh, this was the way uh, that uh, you know primarily security investigators used to aggregate all the logs in a singular s3 bucket so the resource where all the logs were stored was the s3 bucket and the format of these files was json now trails did not provide any other feature except the ability to store logs and therefore the service teams had to come up with their own data processing pipelines uh, either using AWS native services like Athena or QuickSight dashboards or using third-party products like Splunk uh, third-party SIM providers like Splunk so obviously this was a lot of extra overhead and sometimes when you have security incidents right and some teams might not be doing this extra data processing the you know the investigation that they have to do to go through all the JSON files and figure out what was happening that was really intensive and so that's why CloudTrail Lake was launched to support and uh, figure out a way going forward. Uh, if you want to learn about um, CloudTrail trail resources and how they work I would recommend watching this lab that I have recently created and uh, this lab um, will show you how the trail resources is created in AWS and how uh, basic S3 uh, API events can be logged and can be analyzed using those JSON log files. But again, that's a very manual approach, but helps to understand this so you can understand CloudTrail better. Also, there's a article at the top of this page uh, where I have provided some foundational knowledge on CloudTrail. Um, make sure to read that as well. So coming back to our discussion on how trails are different from CloudTrail Lake. Uh, in CloudTrail Lake, we have the storage of our logs in a AWS managed uh, source called Event Data Store. Um, now this is different from S3 in a way that you don't really have access to the JSON log files or you can't manually see the data. But the way for you to access the data would be via an SQL queryable interface where you can either run your own SQL queries or there are a ton of sample queries for you to run if you're in a hurry and want to quickly see the data. Um, plus, Event Data Store also provides a dashboard that's populated by default based on um, some of the things like the top API calls or top sources, but you can also customize the dashboard. And the last bit of difference between Lake and Trail is that there you can also store sources outside of AWS or outside of CloudTrail, AWS CloudTrail within the Lake. This could be your third-party uh, providers um, like uh, Cloud CloudStrike, uh, Clumio, or uh, even Viz. And it can also be your own custom sources that uh, you have to make sure that you comply with the format that CloudTrail uh, provides. Uh, but you can integrate all those sources within the same CloudTrail Lake as well. So a big difference between how Lake and Trail works. Um, so hopefully this gives you a good overview of why and when you should uh, use CloudTrail Lake. Uh, next, let's see, uh, let's see what we'll be covering in the demo exercise. In the demo, we'll be working from a single AWS account. Uh, the first thing that we'll do is we'll create a data event store in the CloudTrail section. Uh, and the event data store would be tracking all the data events uh, in all the S3 bucket and Lambda functions within this AWS account. We'll then create a Lambda function and a S3 bucket and we'll invoke some uh, API calls that will be used as demo for us to see how these then show up in the CloudTrail logs. So the API calls will be the invoke function on the Lambda and the put object and the delete object on the S3 bucket. Finally, we will explore these API calls and the data within it using SQL queries and the dashboards visible in the CloudTrail Lake section. All right, let's start our demo by creating the event data store first in the CloudTrail 
uh, section I'm in the cloud trail uh, menu and as you can see there are two separate options here for lake and trails so there are two different ways of uh, creating a cloud trail or event log in this demo obviously we'll be focusing on lake so if I click on it I can see the three steps to create um, the cloud trail lake first is to create an event data store and the second is to run SQL queries and the third is to add an integration that's an optional step so we'll be doing step one and step two in this video so let's click on create event data store and uh, let's give this event data store a name first and if you see the pricing option below immediately you can see how this is different from the cloud trail lake also in the cloud trail trails resources where trails do not offer any retention abilities uh, they are reliant on the underlying storage and you'll have to build those custom retention in the s3 bucket so for this one we'll give it a duration of seven days which is the minimum for us to keep the cost down we're also not encrypting this one but uh, since this is just a demo but feel free to do that on your own lake resource source and then lake query federation essentially means that uh, you're exporting this cloud trail audit data to your glue catalog the uh, glue data catalog and uh, it, and that provides you the ability to create your own custom uh, uh, sql queries using using athena or custom dashboards uh, in the events type section we we can again see the second difference that cloud trail lake has from trails where we can also have events from outside of aws uh, it can be from your own integrations or your you know third party integrations but the funds that we'll be focusing on in this lab is the events within aws um, and these are either cloud trail events um, or it could be cloud trail insight events which are uh, identifying unusual activities happening within the account and then it can also be configuration events and for this one you need to integrate with the aws config service um, for you to be able to set up that um, in this video we'll be focusing on cloud trail events and within events specifically on data events which are going to be um, for different aws storage services or compute services we'll be focusing on s3 so let's select that from here and in the log selector template we'll be selecting log all events because you want to log all the api activities happening on all the s3 buckets in this account and we'll do similar for our lambda function with that done let's click on next and review our information here uh, we can see that we are creating an event data store the retention period is seven days and if we scroll down we can see there is no lake query fund federation and the events that we are monitoring is the data events on s3 and lambda and we are monitoring for all the events so with that let's create our event data store now so this takes some time but if we click on refresh we can now see that this event data store is in the status of enabled and we are good to move forward next let's create a lambda function so i'm going to use one of the blueprints provided by aws uh, and the blueprint that i will be selecting is the hello world uh, uh, python 310 function and let's give this function a name and uh, we're going to use a basic uh, or we're going to use the create a new role uh, option here we don't really need aws permission so we don't really need this but let's just click on it and then um, as you can see the function is pretty simple is exporting out the values for the different key that are passed in the event so with that let's click on create function with our function now created let's uh, go down and uh, in the code section we'll be clicking on test and providing a, a custom test uh, as input to it and uh, let's give this test a name and provide some uh, random values here and then we'll be clicking on test now this test is basically the invoke function api call so which we are trying to see how it's recorded back in the uh, the cloud trail uh, event data store so our function is, has now run as you can see it's returning the event key uh, or the value for the event key one next let's create the s3 bucket for this demo and uh, we'll be giving this bucket a name and then keeping all the defaults options as it is here and then clicking on create bucket with the bucket created i'm going to be uploading an object uh, to this bucket now this is going to be our put object api call and uh, we're going to click on add file and click on upload 
to do the put object API call. Uh, with the put object API call succeeded, I'm going to be doing the delete object call by going to the bucket and deleting the object that I just uh, uploaded. And uh, clicking on delete and typing the permanently delete database uh, requirement here and then click on delete object. So with that, I have run two API calls on this bucket, put object and API and the uh, delete object. Okay, now for the final segment in this video, let's go ahead and see the API events that we have triggered from the CloudTrail lake section. So I'm in the lake section and now we'll be clicking on dashboard here. And uh, as you can see, we can run the dashboard or the queries behind the dashboard for uh, any time range. I'll be selecting last one day here and I'll have to select the EDS that I just created. And the only option that right now AWS has is uh, the S3 data events in dashboard, but I'm sure that will change in the future as more and more people adopt it. But for now, you can only see S3 data events in the dashboard. So I'm gonna click run queries and uh, I can immediately see that some data is popping up. So we have had about eight uh, different uh, activities in the S3 um, events, right? And we can see the top S3 actions here, and we see the delete object, the put object that we did, right? And uh, if you want to analyze this further, as you can see at the bottom, you can see the view and analyze and query editor. So if I click on it, it shows me the X SQL query behind that dashboard. And um, you can see the format again is similar to any other SQL query. Um, but if I click and see the query results here, I can see all the API calls for S3 that have been called or the events that have been called. And uh, with respect to the SQL query, obviously you're not limited by this output. You have the event properties section on the left hand side uh, of the screen where you can select any other parameters that you want to show up in the command output um, and uh, this can this is all the fields that are there in a regular cloud trail log field uh, so you have the ability to customize these queries and get the results based on your want and needs now let's take a look at the queries section and we'll go to sample queries here and uh, what AWS provides by default is a ton of sample queries that uh, you can use if you are limited in time and as I use for this demo as well so I was trying to find out uh, who invoked my lambda function how many times it was invoked so I searched for lambda here um, or I can also search for invoke here but that you know pulled out all the queries that were using that using the invoke API call and I can see the users or I can also track the frequency and I can track the frequency per month so let me click on track users that invoke lambda functions to see uh, who were the users and um, as you can see from the results I've used my root account for the one invocation so that shows up here and I can also pull the sample query to find out which lambda function was uh, invoked and uh, for that I will use the um, the track uh, uh, lambda invocation frequency uh, and let's see the output for that and that shows the the ARN or the ARN for the function which was invoked so that's the cloud security demo lambda that we created earlier and uh, obviously shows the invocation count um, so uh, so this is very easy for you to run any API is one last API uh, one last query that we will run is going to be just finding out all the APIs that were um, triggered in this event range in this uh, time range and if I click on next if I click on run uh, I can see all the event sources here uh, which is uh, which is primarily on the S3 and Lambda the two that we uh, run and you can see all the event names within this event sources that was also triggered so so thanks guys for watching this was it for the demo um, I hope you appreciate how CloudTrail Lake is able to easily give answers to some of these audit and investigation questions and uh, how it's uh, the, the benefits of this over just the basic trail resource uh, thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe if you want to watch more videos from Cloud Security Masterclass. Thank you.